Hey guys, this video is just going to tell you a little bit about the pastels that I use and some of the techniques and mention some of the books that I also use um, while I'm teaching. So one book that I like to show my students is this one. Uh, it's called Painting with Pastels. So it's a great one to kind of see uh, different pastel mediums, different ways to clean your pastel. Uh, it also talks about different substrates to use and some how to's. So how to make your own kind of pumice um, background or substrate, uh, and then some step-by-step -step guides. So this is a great one to look at. Again, this one is painting with pastels, okay? Another one that I show my students is this book right here, okay? Best of uh, Pastel 2. I haven't seen Best of Pastel 1, so I can't speak to that, but this one's great because I know when you think of pastel there, most people think of a certain way of, uh, drawing or painting with pastels, but this book really kind of shows you um, all the different artists that uh, paint a little differently. So you can look at that one as well. Um, I show my students this one, which is um, a book on Marie Cassatt. Uh, this one is a mixture of her oils and pastels. So um, great book to look at and kind of challenge students to see whether or not they're looking at a pastel or an oil. Uh, another one is here, and I'm trying to do this so you can see the author as well. Um, this book is Pastel Painting Atelier. Wonderful book to see as well. Talks about studio practices, goes into um, art history and kind of what we're doing now. Um, great book to look at as well. So different lessons in there. Um, speaking of Marie Cassatt, another one I show my students is Edgar Degas, of course, um, with his pastels. Magnificent. Okay. This book is great to see as well. There's the author there. Um, and then the author, sorry, I don't think I showed the author for the Marie Cassatt one, just in case you're looking for it. There's that, okay? Um, another one I struggled with, another thing I struggled with was skin tones. And so this book has been really beneficial um, for me to get skin tones down. Uh, I used to do really muddy skin tones, so this one really helped me when it came to oil painting. But it does talk about oil, pastel, and watercolor. So this is a great um, book, different color palettes to kind of observe. Uh, a little bit about color theory as well. So I would definitely take a look at this one. And then the last one I have to show you, which talks about color theory, is uh, Pantone's Guide to Communicating with Color. Amazing book when it comes to color. I would say if you're graphic, I mean anything really in color, graphic design, interior design, um, illustration, fine art. And what it does in the beginning, it talks about different colors and the meanings of those colors and kind of how it's used in society and advertising. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it goes through all those colors. But what's also cool is in the back, it gives you color palettes. And these color palettes are based off of different moods. So if you're ever trying to decorate your house or come up with a painting, um, maybe you want a painting that is showing something a little bit more playful. So it'll give you color swatches, Pantone color swatches, swatches that go with that as well. So I would definitely look into this book if you don't already have it. I'm just going to talk about some pastels that I use. These are my main ones. You can see them written here. So I use a Prismacolor New Pastel. That's the set that you see here. That's a set of 12 that you're seeing right next to my uh, paper. I also use Rembrandt's. Um, and then the one I'm showing you, they're all from here on. These are all soft pastels to about here. Okay. So I use Rembrandt's, Sennelier's, and also use Unison's. And then for detail, I use pastel pencils. And I just wanted to show you the difference between chalk. These are all chalk pastels. And then me, this over here is going to be oil pastels. So I just wanted to break down the differences between the two, or all of them, basically. Um, with Prisma, excuse me, Prismacolor pastels, um, the, the new pastels, they look like this. They're sticks. On the back of each case, they have numbers. So when you buy them new, they'll have a number on them. Uh, but this is kind of how they draw, okay? Usually when I draw with these, I'm doing more cross hatching. They smudge. Okay, so that's showing you a little bit about the Prismacolor. And then you can layer. So I can take this and add another color on top of it. And I usually do cross hatching. I try not to smudge with my finger. I do cross hatching. So I'll show you a little later on on how I handle uh, that. But just showing you a little bit about the Prismacolor and how much it smudges. Okay, so I'm just trying to give basic press pressure for each one of these just using my finger. The next set I want to show you, and I'm trying to go from hard to soft, even though after the Prismacolor new pastels, which are hard pastels, even though these right here are all considered 
soft pastels. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of give you this little bracket right here, okay? Just so you have a visual. These are all soft pastels, okay? So the next three I'm talking about are soft pastels. I'm going to give them to you hard to soft. That means that even though they're soft pastels, I think Rembrandts are still pretty hard. Um, and I use them interchangeably when I use new pastels. So let me show you those. So I have two sets of Rembrandts. One is a full set that looks like this, okay? And you can see on here, it says dark colors. So different um, pastels, you can buy different types of pastels. So like a um, landscape palette or a portrait palette. And then you just slide this off, okay? This opens up and then you have your darks, okay? So it's really, kind of hard to get darks and pastels, so this is makes it really um, easy to get those darks uh, when you're doing pastels. So these are full sticks. You'll notice the full sticks have the wrappers on them, and then when you obviously get down, you just peel that wrapper a little bit. And you can buy these individually, that's why they have the little barcode on them as well, but I just wanna show you what that looks like, okay? So for the Rembrandts, look at all that pigment. Pigment is that uh, powder. Um, and then you can see how that smudges a lot more than the Prismacolors, okay? So that's the Rembrandts and that's the uh, soft pastels, full sticks. And then I also have Rembrandts that is a general, you can see right here, general selection. So it's a general palette. And you, again, you just slide that off, okay? Um, and for this palette, same thing, just lift off the top and then just take off, don't throw this away because this is what protects your pastels. Um, so this is my general selection, okay? And I love it because it's giving me some colors that I'm not getting in my 12 set over here, and that's why I kind of use them together. But again, the half sticks don't come with wrappers, which is fine, and I tend to break mine, so you'll see them there. Uh, but for the half sticks, same thing. Lots of rich pigment that goes down, sorry. <laughs> pigment that goes down, and again, nice smudgeability here, okay? if that's a word. And then I have, um, after that, it goes to Sennelier's. Okay, so Sennelier's, great set here. This is also um, dark palette, okay? So you can buy different sets, and I'm just gonna see, see I'm lifting this up. I tape, you'll notice this is not taped because I'm opening, but I tape the corners. I typically tape two sides of all my pastels so that the top doesn't accidentally come off and then all my pastels just go flying. So if you have even this set right here, um, you might be able to see on the side, you can see where the tape was. So I tape that shut so they don't go flying out. But again, I'll take this off. These are Sennelier's. These are amazing. I love Sennelier's. Um, nice and rich color. I'll just pull one out, okay? Uh, let me pull one where I can, don't have to pull the wrapper. Let's just take this one. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and just give a little drawing here. Super rich, okay? Do you see how bright that is? Now, if I take the same kind of red, in my uh, Prismacolor New Pastels. It's not as intense, okay? So you get a lot more pigment in this one and less binder. On these, you have a lot more binder and less pigment, okay? And these you can also mix with water and turn them into like a painting, okay? So you can see how they liquefy a little bit. And uh, they also have nice smudgeability as well, okay? Um, so those were the Sennelier's. And then I wanna show you one more these are my babies. These are unisons, and I've had these since I've been in uh, college. So these have been around for a while, so they last a long time, even though you may make a big investment in terms of a front cost, but they last a long time. These are hand-rolled pastels. A lot of the soft pastels are. I'm just gonna grab this one. And um, let's see, this particular palette, there's no name to it, it just says uh, unison. Okay, uh, and then I wanna show you the unisons, okay, so super soft. You can see how, I mean, that literally just comes off on my hand. It's super buttery, I should say, okay. Look at that, how rich that is. You're not getting that over here, okay? And soft, the softer is, the more, look at that, the more pigment you have in there, less binder, so more pure powder, see my hands, okay. All the pastel just washes off. Now, these are all um, soft pastels right here. We talked about hard pastels here. Now over here, we have pastel pencils. So the ones I use are the Stabilo Carbothello pencils. Um, and I love these. These are great ones. I just buy the 24 set. Um, 
<laughs> so these are great ones to use and I'm just going to grab one so you can see. They kind of resemble for me the new pastel so it really helps with detail. You can even hear the softness of that. I'm sorry, the hardness of it compared to the softness of this. Okay, so different kind of texture. I would I would consider these more hard, okay? And they're pencils, so you use them with the um, with anything, really. Anything from this line over, you can use all this together. Now, typically for me, I'll use the uh, hard pastels first, and then I'll layer on top soft pastels. I know a lot of pastel artists only use the soft pastels. I like to be able to get a little bit more layers down with the hard, and then I go into the soft. Everybody uses their pastels differently. Um, I think what you can also do is keep in mind that if you're working with soft, a lot, as you can see, a lot of pigment goes down really fast. And so you have to control how much you're putting down. Otherwise, you put down way too much. Okay. The last one I want to show you, which you should not mix. So if I could uh, use an orange line just to kind of show you from here on out this way, I would not ever, and I have not ever, mixed oil pastel with chalk pastel. So the other ones are chalk based. So you can see that here, chalk pastel. Okay. Um, the other ones are chalk based. Think of sidewalk chalk. These are oil pastels. Now I actually started off with oil pastels when I was in high school. And so when I was first using pastels, I would use oil pastels. Uh, and then when I got into college, I ended up switching into um, chalk pastels. So let me just show you what these look like. They're a lot more buttery. Um, and they feel like oil, so they don't come off on your hand because there's a lot more binding to it. And uh, even though they have that nice vibrancy to it, oh, sorry, I think my hands are dirty from before. <laughs> See all that? Uh, even though they have a, a lot of um, color and pigment, I can't necessarily sh uh, sh um, smudge that as much as I can over here, okay? Um, also, it's very hard to erase this oil pastel. These I can erase out. Uh, this is a kneaded eraser. And when you have a lot of soft pastel, you want to press and lift. Okay, so you press and lift, and then I'm pressing and I'm rotating. So you want to do that a lot until you get back to some paper. Then you're able to erase, and then anything that doesn't erase from there, you can try to go back in with a Tough Stuff eraser, or in fact, this is a Factus BM2 eraser, and get some of that out. Um, and then be careful how you knock that off. Now remember, you can take that, even though there's some color in here and it's not coming out, I can still take, this one is a, a half stick Rembrandt, and I can still draw in here and get a lot of pigment covering. So you just need to get the pastel out enough. But the problem is with this one, because it's oil-based, it's not really gonna wanna erase on you. Um, and so what most people do, you can scrub it out like that, it stains the paper a lot. What some people do is they actually scrape it out. I'm just using my nail. You can see that in there. They actually scrape some of that out. So you can see that. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the different types of pastels. So now I want to move into how I actually use the Prismacolor because for my classes, I have them using the Prismacolor new pastels. Now, I know on my box I wrote down full set because I have so many different sets, but this helps you see what they look like. So Prismacolor, ignore that. <laughs> uh, set of 12, new pastel, and that's what we're looking at over here. All right, so let's just flip the page and go from there. So with my Prismacolors, I want you to keep in mind there's several different ways that you can shade with these. And when I say Prismacolor, this kind of goes with any pastel. Um, you can just basically draw with it, okay? So if I take my pastel and I just draw, okay? Um, typically when I'm going to do a drawing, I will either start off with graphite or I'll start off with a Sanguine Conte pencil, okay? Uh, the reason why I use a Sanguine Conte pencil is because Sanguine, this kind of brick red color, uh, really goes easily into all the colors over here. If you use a black, like black charcoal, that black is going to mix with your yellow and turn it green, mixes with a lot of colors and changes the colors unless you know how to control it. So you can draw with pastel as well. And if you were going to use a pastel to draw with, I would not necessarily draw with this one, even though it looks like the same color as the one I told you to use, because this one has a lot of pigment in it. It almost feels like a soft pastel. So typically I default to this kind of orangey uh, red color to sketch off with if I wanted to sketch with it. Okay, But when you want to draw with your pastel, um, you want to use, let me see if I can give you an example. Um, if my hand is the paper, 
So think about it like that, okay? If my hand is the paper, when I'm drawing, I'm drawing kind of at this 45 degree angle. So when you see me, you can't see it because I'm drawing this, this way. But on the paper, you'll see me drawing at a 45, about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just kind of rubbing that back and forth and then criss, 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 <laughs> cross hatching uh, back and forth this way, okay? I was gonna say crisscrossing, but that doesn't work. Um, that's what I'm doing. So you'll see me do this on the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw with this at that 45 degree angle, okay? Try to keep the lines close together. So this is the way I do it. This is what not to do, okay? So don't go like that, okay? And don't go like this, where you're scrubbing into it, okay? That's not what we want. We want something that's a nice light pressure and you're cross hatching. So you see me turn this way and this way. Try not to blow this. If you blow it, then all that pigment's gonna come back up into your respiratory system. Uh, so typically what I'll do is I'll take the paper, turn it vertically, knock it onto uh, maybe a paper towel, and then um, keep going from there. All right, so if I wanna mix a color, okay, and I wanna get, uh, let's say we're making a green, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and choose this yellow, okay? And put on top. So you can see how many, I'm just cross hatching, okay? Now, one of the things is you'll notice that I'm not actually making a true green uh, because I don't actually have a true blue. So you have to have a true blue and a true yellow. When I say true, that means the primary blue and the primary yellow to make a you know secondary green. But this is how I'm mixing colors. That's just how I do it, okay? Uh, and I'll give you some examples of how to color match. That's just how you draw with the pastel, okay? You can also do another method, okay? So this is drawing, okay? So I'll just, maybe I'll just write this on here. So draw. You can also use the side of the pastel, okay? So if you take the pastel, there's a number I was talking to you guys about before. If you take the side of the pastel and just put it flat on the paper and then move it, you're gonna get a different type of quality. It's more rough. So sometimes in my backgrounds, I'll do something like that where I use the side of the pastel. And you can layer on top of that too. Sometimes the shorter sticks work best for that. And I'm just, again, using the side of it. And then if you want to make it lighter, I can take a little bit of white. White almost blends it out, but don't use it necessarily as a blender because it also lightens it up, okay? So I can use the side of the pastel. Another thing I can do is uh, cross hatching, okay? So I could take my pastel and I'll just write that here. I'll say cross hatching. Okay, so I can take these the um, pastel like I'm writing and then just cross hatch, so like this. So you may see some of this cross hatching in like Edgar Degas' work. An example, let me get out the book so I can show you. You see a lot of that cross hatching technique in his work as well, where you see these lines on top. So typically you should color this area underneath first and then start doing these cross hatching lines that happen right on top, okay? Um, so you can do cross hatching. It's also kind of like feathering out. Um, multiple colors on top. Now you could do something where you do a lighter version of drawing underneath and the cross hatching stays on the paper, meaning I'm not lifting it up. And then you can do this cross hatching method on top, almost like you're doing blades of grass on top of that. Okay, so that's cross hatching. Um, another way you can do it is blending. Now, when you see my pastel demo before of my portrait, um, I don't smudge with my fingers. I usually use this kind of drawing cross hatching while I'm keeping it on the paper method. But you could do a method where you smudge everything out um, as you're working. Let's say you wanna get a nice uh, purple or something. So I'm using this kind of orangey red. Um, and so I'll write over here, blending, smudging, okay? Again, typically I don't do this one, but it may call for it depending on what you're working on. So you go ahead and shade close together, like how we drew the first one, okay? Then you take your finger and you smudge it, okay? Uh, and again, make sure you keep track of your fingers because if I change the color to a yellow uh, and I didn't want this color to be impacting on top, then you need to clean your finger or use a different finger, okay? So again, I'm putting this close together while I'm drawing. I don't care if they mix because I'm making an orange anyway. So, and then I just smudge on top, 
Okay. Now by doing this smudging method, what happens is if you're looking at your paper like this, meaning that if I turn the paper up this edge right here that I'm looking at, depending on what surface you're working on, if this is a surface that has more uh, like bumpy surfaces in it, like a pastel paper, you'll see these little holes in the drawing. I'm working on a mixed media paper, so I don't get that. But if I was, what you're seeing on that edge of the paper is your paper is like this, and then it has these little buckets, let's just say, and that's that rough surface of your paper. Now the first layer I put on, which was red, went on top of that and then went in the hole, and then went on top of that and then went in the hole, and so forth and so on. And as I add more, it's like more is filling up this bucket, okay? Now when I put yellow on top, I put yellow here and it goes in the bucket. And I put yellow here and it goes in the bucket. And it just keeps doing that as it goes around. Now you'll notice when I shade though, I was cross hatching when I showed you that one. So this is a representation of what happens over here, okay? I was cross hatching. So think about by cross hatching, meaning moving this in different directions, you're mixing your bucket, okay? And so now you're seeing multiple layers in here. It's like having the blue and having the yellow, but you still see the blue through the yellow. Now, when you blend and smudge, it's like doing it this way, where you've put your red down and you've put it in the bucket, but when you smudged it, you filled the bucket at the same time, like that, okay? And then you went on top and you put the yellow, and some of the yellow will seep into the bucket. Think of sand, okay? Some of it will go in there, like that. But you're not seeing as much three-dimensional qualities as you would here. So even though we use two colors, we're not seeing the same kind of, um, I guess, variation, that depth that you're creating. So if you look at my pastels on my website, this is the method I use, I don't smudge. But if you're ever doing a master copy and you're seeing it super flat, that's how you're gonna get that by smudging it out, okay? Um, we can also scumble on top of it. So let's say you've scumbled something, or blended it and smudged it down. You could take something uh, and scumble on top as well, which means you go flat and use a little bit of the side of it and scumble on top like this. Okay, so you may see something like that. So you can mix these different techniques together um, and, uh, and interchangeably. I actually add some water on top of my pastels to liquefy them. Um, if I put my hand in some water and I liquefy that, you'll see some of this dulls down, turns into like a paint. You just have to have the right paper for it. Um, so that's one other method that you can do is, is liquefy something and then once that dries, you can go right on top of it and continue with your pastel. So I've done that in a lot of my pastels as well. So be careful with the usage of black and white, okay? Those can really overpower. And so if I put down a black, you can see how dark that is, and it really overpowers everything else I've done in this entire paper, okay? So you have to be very careful with black. If you ever add a black, let's say I wanted to make this darker, and so I added a black, I would always wanna put a purple or blue on top of it. Now, the difference again, is if you're ever doing a master copy and the master that you're copying is using strict black, then that's what you have to do. You have to copy what you see. But if it's your personal work, that still looks really dark, but the purple helped tone it down. So it's not as extreme as this black right here. So I just wanted to show you some of the tips and tricks and the methods and um, resources that I use when I'm using my pastel. Now the white uh, can be worked in increments, meaning you can put down a highlight, so I'm just pushing that into the paper, or you can soften that out and create like a light mass by doing less pressure. You can do that one first too, where you do less pressure and build up to a highlight, okay? But if you smudge the white down, it then just becomes whatever was underneath. So if I smudge that down, it just lightens up the other layer and you kind of lose that highlight. So you can do that on any of these um, the white really stands out with the white um, Prismacolor. If I need a white detail, I would not use the white that comes in my pastel pencils because it does not get me as much um, as I would if I was just using the pastel stick. So you can actually even see in my pastel um, pencil set, I keep a white in there for my lightest lights because the white pastel pencils don't really give me that, okay? So this is just one method on how I can get that. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is color matching because it's gonna come down to you seeing a color and having to match that. Um, let's say we see this color right here, this kind of tealish color. You look at your color palette that you have access to um, as long as you're not limiting your colors and you say, okay, what can I use to make that? 
Um, so let's get out some colors. And the way that you can tell any colors by mixing it with white. So I see green. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this one too. I also see blue because I think of turquoise, okay? Um, you can use the darker blue because that one has green in it, but if you go too dark, then it's gonna change the color. So the dark blue may be good in the shadow mass as well. Obviously, I'm gonna need a white, okay? Um, and if I was trying to get the dirt on my uh, pencil sharpener, I would also use some red, okay? So let's try to color match. Then you wanna start off with what we call our local color, the base color of this. Um, to do that, if I'm looking at these two colors, just to guess which one would be a little bit more accurate, I would say that this is closer to a secondary green and this is more of a tertiary green, which is a lime green, okay? So I'm gonna use this one and I'm just gonna shade that down. And I'm doing this drawing method over here, okay? And then in order for me to see that color, I'm gonna go ahead and add some white because I know it's lighter. Just layering that on top. Okay. Now, I also don't want to um, smudge, so I'm going to go ahead and push this off, okay, this little brush off. I would have just lifted it up, but now that I have the brush, I'll just knock it out of the way. All right, now the color matching, I need a little bit blue. Again, I don't want to use the dark blue. I'm going to use the lighter blue because if I go too dark too soon, we'll have a problem. So we're going to go ahead and mix some of this blue in. Now, the difference is I can tell you all the colors I use. So, so far I went green. You might not be able to see this, but I went white. Now I'm putting blue, so I can give you the formula. It's like baking a cake. I can tell you this much sugar, this much flour, but the thing I can't tell you is how much, like one cup of sugar or, you know, two cups of flour or whatever, you know? I can't tell you that. That's what you need to learn in terms of color mixing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to white again, okay? So I'm gonna lighten this up. Light pressure. And you can see how the pastels actually blend themselves, which is why I don't smudge, okay? I let the pastels do the work. So now I've gotten something here. So then I'm gonna use a little bit of my lime green. Just to kind of bring that up a little bit. Just a little bit. I'll go back to my blue. Again, this is without me smudging. That's just blending this on the paper, okay? Now, could you perfectly match these colors? I don't think so, because you don't necessarily have your primary colors. Now, if I had a primary blue, and um, then I think I could get really close to this. Now that's why I tend to have this palette because I feel like when I have this palette, it helps me match this color even more. So like if I'm drawing this on my own, these would be the colors I'm using. If I'm using a shadow mask, I'll go ahead and put in some blues for the shadow mask. Let's go ahead and lift this up so you can see. Okay. I'll go ahead and put in some blues for my shadow mask. And then I'd probably put in a little bit, like when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit of purple because that blue has some green in it. So I'm just putting a little bit of purple in here for a shadow mask. Now this is still the same object even when it turns into shadow. So I'm gonna add just a tad bit of white to it and let that cross hatch and kind of fade into my light mask. Now, Again, even though it's not 100%, I think it's pretty close, okay? Now, if I was trying to get a little bit more accurate, I could dive into some of these colors. So then we look at this to here, okay? And we say, okay, what will give me something that is closer? I feel like if I mix this one, uh, possibly a little bit of this one, this one's really close together, then I might get that. It's still your thinking color theory. So even if you have more access to colors, then let's say this 12 set, you still have to kind of think about it. Now you could do this on its own and put this here and make, you know, see how this, this can easily be used with this Prismacolor New Pastel. And if I add a little bit of this green, I'm gonna get that color. But if you didn't know color theory, how would you know that you needed these two together? There were so many options that we could have choose, uh, chosen or selected from. All these greens, some blues down here. And then right away I was able to figure out I need these colors, okay? And that got me closer to what I needed. But what's even more cool is if you have these, not only can you just do them right away and find that color, you can also add some of this into your mixture on top of here, okay? Now, will it ever get to this? No, because what happens is every color underneath, all this that we put underneath is still there. 
And that's the difference with pastels. When you're matching colors and you're not getting what you want, you have to take out what you don't want. Because otherwise, if you just keep layering on top of that, you have not gotten rid of all of this that you did. It's still there, okay? Even if I put this, which was these two, on top of that, that's still there, okay? So whatever you need, if you're like, okay, I'm not getting the color I want, and this is what you had put down, but you realize you have these two colors, then you need to take that out, okay? So that's when the kneaded eraser comes into play. You can scrub it out with a Tough Stuff eraser. It's just a lot of pigment on there, which means that powder. Or you can press, I'm just pressing and lifting it. You can see it's stamping that. Okay, so pressing, rotate, lift it out. And it lifts it out in layers. So the layers you put down, that's what it's taking out. So it helps to have at least the primary colors. The Prismacolor New Pastel set does not come, the 12 set at least, does not come with uh, you know primary colors. And that's gonna be the challenge for some of you guys who are color matching is you don't have the primary colors. If I take this powder out, again, even though you see the residue of it on there, okay, I'm just gonna knock that out. I could still take these two colors. See how now I'm able to put that on top? And it could be that you don't even have these two colors. Maybe you just need to change the color around with your uh, Prismacolor New Pastels. So you can put those right on top and uh, have it cover up what is underneath as long as you can erase, you know, semi back to paper. All right. Uh, and then I did color uh, cover color theory in my other pastel video. So if you want to go look at that, feel free. But just real quick as a recap, okay, um, before we end this video, you're going to have your yellow. Okay, you're going to have your red and your blue. Mixing those together, we're going to get, I'll just do O for orange. Mixing these two together, we're going to do P for purple. Mixing these, or you could say violet, everyone's picky. Okay? Over here, mix these two together, we get green. Okay. Now for us, the colors that we're going to reference, I'll show you the differences. We are going to use, there's two blues. Okay. This is going to be my primary blue. Okay. If I have this blue over here, which is the dark blue, and I have this blue over here, which I am saying is my primary blue, and I add white on top, this one still looks blue. And I wiped this off on my hand, by the way, okay? This one looks more turquoise. You can see the green in that one. That's why we choose this one, okay? We have green, secondary green is here, okay? For my yellow, I only have one. For my orange, I don't really have one, and so I need to mix these two together. So let's talk about the red first, okay? We've got two different types of, we'll call them reds, these two, okay? This one is going to be my primary. When I put this one here and I put this one here, you can see how one is more pink and so automatically you kind of think, okay, the pink one is primary. Well, if I mix some white on top, that one still remains more red. Wipe that off. This one turns to pink. Okay, so that is going to be your primary. And then if I want an orange, therefore I'm gonna take that red and the yellow and mix them together because you saw red and yellow, okay? So we're gonna put this one in. This one I didn't have to do it because I already had a green. I cheated. <laughs> and you know that if I mix these two together, I won't get that, okay? Because this isn't a primary blue. And then you just alternate until you get the color you want. So you can see me switching until I get the orange that I want, okay? And then I have purple, okay? So again, I'll cheat just like my green and I'll do a purple. You already know that in this 12 set, this red, and this blue are not primary. I would even go to say that this is not even a primary yellow <laughs> because if I were to uh, get more of a primary yellow, I'm thinking more of this as a primary yellow. This came from my uh, Rembrandt set, okay? That's what I'm thinking is more of a primary yellow. Um, and if I'm thinking of a primary red, that's what I'm thinking as a primary red, okay? And I don't have that either. So you can see the differences between what I'm choosing. And then if I were to say a primary blue, that's what I'd be calling a little bit more of a primary blue. So you can see why I'm saying that you're not going to truly get your secondaries without your true primaries. These are the ones in the set, though. So this is what, it, what you got to work with, okay? Um, so I cheated and made that. If I chose these two, we're not going to get that. But if I chose these two, I could probably get that, 
okay? Um, you've got complementary colors, so these work nicely together. Opposite of the color wheel, they complement each other. You put them side by side, they vibrate, they pulsate, okay? Uh, red and green, orange and blue, and yellow and purple, okay? If you mix them, they dull down. So if you've got a red, I'm sorry, a red, if you've got a purple, <laughs> and it's too purple, you need to dull it down, you mix a little bit of that yellow into it and it dulls it down. And that goes with any of these colors. But if you put too much, you've now turned it into a totally different color. So think about it. If you have a yellow and that yellow is too bright, you just need a little bit of purple. Again, it goes to that formula. A little bit of purple. And then go back to your yellow to let it mix a little bit. Okay, dull it down. You can also smooth that out if you need to. But if you put too much purple, you've changed the color. Okay, so it's just accenting a little bit with the pastel. This also goes for oil painting. If you need to dull down a color, mix it with its complement. But if you want them to stand out, you can put them side by side and they're going to really pop out. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the color theory and neutralization. Something popping out, something neutralizing so you understand why we can't mix our secondaries with this set, so don't get frustrated if you can't, okay? Um, so just to recap, we talked about color theory today. We also talked about how to do the different types of pastels, different ways of doing it. This is dried now, so you can see how I can go straight back over that and draw. This is just a Prismacolor. And we also spoke about the different types of pastels, so I hope this helped. Bye!